for that, the super contagious COVID-19 strain BA5 now accounts for 60% of all new infections here in New England. Here to explain the impact on kids is Dr. Rick Malley, an infectious disease specialist at Boston Children's Hospital. Nice to see you, Doctor. Hey, Dr. Malley. Thanks for joining us today. So let's take a look at this graphic together. State data from the past two weeks shows more than 3,000 COVID cases in kids between up to the age 19, 19 and under. The, the, the big number is really at the bottom, zero deaths. What does that tell you, if anything, about the risk level for children right now? Well, the first thing is to, um, of course, comment that of these 3,000 cases, there are undoubtedly more because many people right now are doing home tests and they're not necessarily reporting them to the health authorities because the child is doing well and there's really no reason to uh, alert anybody about it. So I think the 3,000 is actually significantly an underestimate. The second thing is the zero deaths, of course, is uh, very reassuring. Uh, it's what we know about COVID in general in children. It tends to be less severe in children than in adults. Uh, any death of any person, and in particular any child, is of course a, a tragedy. Uh, but this does remind us that um, uh, with children, we have a much lower risk of severe disease or mortality, and that seems to hold up mm -hmm. with this variant mm -hmm. as well. Doctor, let's get to some viewer questions. The first one is from Kathy. She says, my sister is fully vaccinated for COVID, but won't vaccinate my 10-month-old nephew because she says he gets protection from her breast milk. Is that true? Well, I think she's right that there's some protection that can be derived from breast milk. It's protection against COVID-19 and also against a host of other viruses and bacterial infections. But at the same time, uh, I don't think we would consider that that would be enough to replace uh, the protection that you can get from a vaccine. Mm -hmm. but doctor, here's, here's another one, and this one comes from LB. And LB asks, which COVID vaccine is recommended for boys? My son is almost 18 months old. Is there one for boys and is there one for girls? Uh, there really isn't one for boys or girls at this point. The, the only vaccines that are currently authorized in young children, like this one, uh, are the one of the two mRNA vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, the one made by Pfizer-BioNTech and the other one made by Moderna. Those are the two vaccines that uh, your uh, viewer can choose from. Uh, they each, they, they are both thought to be equally effective in terms of how well they generate antibodies in the child. And there are slight differences perhaps uh, in the reactogenicity, or meaning the side effect right. profile of these two vaccines, mm -hmm. but not major. But, the, but, but they can give either to, to, their, to their son, right, okay. That's correct. Um, That's a, correct. a question from Allison, doctor, sorry to interrupt. Do toddlers get any protection after one Pfizer dose? We're still trying to decide whether to bring our two-year-old daughter to a family wedding this Saturday. So it's a good question Allison's asking. From the adult data, it does look in fact like there's significant protection that you get from one dose. It's not enough, and that's why, as you know, adults are recommended to not only get uh, a second dose, but also boosters. But we don't really know the extent to which this applies in children. My guess is that there's some protection after one dose, but that really in order for the child to be considered fully immunized, they need more. Dr. Malley, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks, doctor. Great Stay to well. see you. And, and our viewers at home do understand if you have COVID related questions that you would like our experts to answer, just email them to ask at WC.